Hello and welcome everyone to Developer Update 11.4 where we will reveal the last four cards of the Claw and Dagger card release, uh, which is coming tomorrow actually. And uh, alongside it, there will be some balance changes and we are going to show you the highlights of those as well, giving a little bit of insight on why we did what. And that's why Jean is here with me. And uh, well, I think we had a very exciting week of card reveals behind us. Thank you again once <laughs> again to our partners. Um, they did an amazing job of teasing and revealing their cards. We've got four, five out of the six factions covered already and only one more ahead of us. But before we get into Nilfgaardian, uh, what would you say, Nilfgaardian uh, little tricks and uh, deceptions <laughs> and whatever they do best, uh, I think we should give the audience a little bit of a recap of what we've seen so far. Agreed, agreed. So let's talk a bit about the different factions that are already been revealed. So, uh, monsters. New Kikimor cards, right? So support for like a swarm playstyle of swarming the board with drones. Uh, we try to kind of give them new payoffs and new strategies, but also new tools to be able to manage the board, right? Because that used to be one of the big problems and still is going to be of the archetype. The board is limited in space. Um, Northern Realms, uh, the first faction we started revealing. Yes. Well, we explored Sigiruven Syndicate in 10.10, and now it is time to explore him in Northern Realm, and there is original identity of Sigismund Distra, Dijkstra. Uh, you know, his spies and, and, and all of these, they focus on tech summoning, and more importantly, tech boosting, as everybody realized. Yeah, I mean... On they give intel mm -hmm. to your units yep. in the back, you know, so that your units get better. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. With Squiatel, uh, we've focused on deployability and uh, this idea of reusing them uh, with these cargo tokens. Uh, as such, strong elves, you know, elves with like a very strong deploy table be a threat even after they've been played right and they need to be either answered or they need to be taken into account for skellige we have actually developed uh, the identity of skellige beast and tried to tie it to rain so we have cars like kelpie and kraken that brings extra rain and storm to the table uh, and the bron on the side of the bronzes they kind of focus on giving new payoffs so we have Anglerfish as a card that requires you to be mindful with your management of rain and sea, uh, of rain and, and storm, whereas uh, Sea Serpent can be used in long run as a pretty good payoff. And finally, for Syndicate, we are exploring the Open Sesame questline from Witcher 3. Uh, but not only that, we are also exploring a new ID for Syndicate, which is this idea of spending your coins down to zero. That's me. Um, <laughs> it's you. Yeah, spending all the money you have, you know, <laughs> and I wish this effect would uh, exist in real life where I would get a bonus if I was able to keep my wallet empty. But unfortunately, oh, that, that would be pretty great. Not the case. Well, in Gwent, your carelessness will be rewarded. <laughs> Uh, through different means, right? Uh, very good coins exchanges, extra coins, uh, even control, right? Through the pretty powerful explosives. So, uh, you know, a variety of tools which I also would like to have in real life, but yeah. Eh. Well, so I guess that's it. And now we need to talk about the last faction remaining, yes. which is everybody's most favorite and hated faction, <laughs> Nil God. Well, I think. Uh... The people have their own opinions about Nilfgaard, and that is very valid, but uh, they obviously also deserve some new tools in the toolkit, mm -hmm. so let's jump ahead and take a look at Contaminator, a 5 provision, 5 power human agent with the ability deploy, banish an enemy unit with 3 or less power, then if it wasn't a token, spawn its base copy at the bottom of your opponent's deck. Um, Jean, please yes. tell me how this card actually fits into my game plan as Novgaard. So, 
I can imagine that the chat is really reacting already very widely because <laughs> this is Clog. <laughs> we are indeed supporting Clog. Clogs. But there is a very, very important twist to it, which is uh, this version of Clog is putting the card at the bottom of your open deck. So um, the way we introduce the Clog cards in Way of the Witcher is that they would place copy at the top of the deck. And it meant that one of the main payoff uh, for these kind of effects was trying to benefit from the consistency loss it was creating for your opponent. Uh, but Contaminators clogs from the bottom. Um, it is a weaker effect, but it supports already existing clog payoffs, right? Cause like Colgrim, and comes uh, with this, you know, benefits of not being as frustrating for your opponent because it's not messing up your consistency. So when it comes to Contaminator itself, its effect, it's a low power card removal, and uh, we so you know a, a stronger effect than one you can expect on the regular clock cards from Way of the Witchers. But again, uh, even though you don't benefit from this consistency loss from your opponent, you still have all of the added benefits of increasing your opponent's deck size. So I feel like we've learned from past experiences by uh, including the tagline if it wasn't a token, is that correct? Yeah, uh, uh, similarly to the clock cards from Wave of the Witcher, uh, which, you know, is a variation we introduced after a few updates, right? The fact that they cannot target tokens. Uh, we started from the get-go with this uh, effect of being limited to not being able to put tokens in, the, in your open right. stack. Seems good to me. Uh, next up, we've got, uh, I would say, a title card if someone would want to describe Nilfgaard as a concept and that is the Toxicologist, uh, the Toxic Faction as you might say. This mm -hmm. is a 4 power, 4 provision human card with the ability deploy, infuse an enemy unit with whenever a card enters or leaves your deck, damage self by 1 and then if it wasn't a token, spawn its copy at the bottom of your opponent's deck. Yeah. So, similarly to Contaminator, Toxicologist is a card that clocks from the bottom. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, Toxicologist also comes with a very direct payoff to the idea that you're messing up with the size of the opponent's deck. Um, and, you know, that messing up is uh, will result in a pretty good removal effect, right? Even though it's a bit slow, the potential to remove a lot of points is really there. It's also important to note that since you are immediately, you know, spawning uh, a card in your opponent's deck, this will immediately trigger the infusion, right? So mm -hmm. on play, on infusing something, you immediately inflect it with uh, a one-point ping. And if it wasn't a token, obviously. Yeah. Well, I think one thing you always have to remember when clogging your opponent is not to give them any cards that they could potentially use. I mean, they probably won't draw into them mm -hmm. unless they shuffle their deck in some way. But there are obviously tutor cards that could perhaps pull cards yeah. from your own deck. So always take care and make sure you infuse the right cards and spawn the right cards at the bottom of the opponent's deck. But I don't think uh, the experienced players out there need that kind of tip. But anyways, wanted to mention it. Next up, we've got very special person, Sandor de Bacala, a human agent. This is the first gold card for Nilfgaard here, with 5 power and 10 provision. And his ability reads, deploy, shuffle a card from your deck into your opponent's deck. Order, spawn a drone at the bottom of your opponent's deck and set its power to the difference between the number of cards in the player's decks. Whenever a card enters or leaves your opponent's deck, boost self by 1. So there's a lot going on, but I'm pretty sure that once we've got it figured out, it's actually quite simple, right? Yeah, there's a lot of things going on, definitely. There's three different effects, right? Uh, the simplest to talk about is probably the last one, which is the passive. So very simple payoff uh, in, this, in a form that is similar to the infusion from Toxicologist, but that will allow the card to grow quite a bunch if you, you know, as, as you keep clogging, right? Uh, then we have the deploy effect. You basically fin by one and increase your open deck size by one. Uh, and you know you can potentially give him a bad card. That possibility. And then uh, um, 
we have the older effect, which is probably seems starting to seem mysterious to people, mm -hmm. uh, where you are in the, you keep increasing your open deck size, right? You put a drone at the bottom, but the power is equal to the difference uh, between the number of cards between both decks. And well, because you're already kind of aiming to create a big difference due to cards like Colgrim and whatnot. Um, that means that the drone is probably going to be high power. Now, why would you want to put a high power card in your opponent's deck? Hmm, I wonder. Mm. Yeah, I, I also wonder, Jean. Uh, shall, we, shall we find out? Yeah, maybe we should. <laughs> well, here you have Abduction, a tactics card. Nine provision. This is the uh, legendary. It's an echo. And its ability is play a unit that isn't from your opponent's starting deck from their deck with a provision cost of 10 or less. Boost it by one for each provision below the limit. Now, please tell me the amount of provision that that drone has in the opponent's deck. Zero, Ryan. And ah. as it turns out, because of all of these limitations of not being able to target tokens, there isn't a lot of ways you can put tokens in your open stack. So, if Adduction targets the drone that has been put by Sendo de Bacala, he's probably gonna play for a lot of points. Um, but that's not the only thing Abduction can do, obviously. Um, abduction is meant as a new way to pay off from all of these cards that you put in your open stack. The reason we this, uh, you know, Amphibious Assault type of payoff um, is that we wanted to, you know, enable you to pick a lot of different targets that are relevant to your situation without feeling like you're actually losing points, right? Mm -hmm. Without feeling like you absolutely have to pick something that is very high provision. It one thing to note is that in a way it is a bit slightly counterproductive uh, due to some part of the game plan that you have as a clock player, right? Uh, you reduce the number of cards in your open deck, which means mm -hmm. that Colgrim can have a bit less points. Uh, but we think that it's going to be worth it, and more importantly, this is also why um, cards like Toxicologist Infusion or Sendor de Bacla's uh, passive have been worded in such a way that it works when a card has been added, but also when a card is being taken out. Mm -hmm. Which also means that if your opponent is, you know, tutoring cards out of his deck, well, is playing in your game plan to a degree. Nice, very nice. So, clock, but with a twist, I would say, and actually kind of negating that negative effect that people maybe did not like as much, or some people didn't like as much about the original clock concept of, you know, blocking the opponent's game plan per se. Um, also, uh, there are cards, you know, that take key cards from the opponent's deck and some people are uh, mm -hmm. you know wondering how these cards maybe work around that and with the production we can already see that uh, you cannot target cards that have existed in the opponent's deck at the start so you're not there to to abduct any you know high level gold cards or rent freeze from the opponent's deck but actually create your own yeah. game plan imposed on the opponent's deck in a sense. Yeah, the original Klog, uh used to focus a lot on finding its value through preventing your opponent from playing. So, you know, paired with the original Lockdown, which would prevent the use of the leader ability, uh, it was very, very disruptive. The goal we try to achieve with this expansion to Clog is make it into something that is doesn't have to rely as much on disruption and can just more rely on doing its own thing mm -hmm. um, while still letting your opponent actually play. Yeah, awesome. Uh, one quick just uh, clarification, just so I'm uh, making it clear for everyone. The first part of this ability, uh, shuffle a card from your deck into your opponent's deck. Uh, maybe you can clarify, uh, do I get to choose exactly which card it is? Uh, is it one of three? Um, and also, where you does it go do. in the opponent's deck? Okay. Uh, you do uh, get to pick which card goes in. Uh, it is shuffled, meaning it gets into a random spot of your opponent's deck. So, awesome. you know, if you take a very good card, you take the risk that it might land in the top of the opponent's deck. 
All right. So you better abduct it quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there you have it. The final four cards of the Claw and Dagger card drop. Uh, thank you very much, Sean, for running through those with me. Um, as always, we don't just bring you new cards, but also create a little bit of a adjustment to existing cards to benefit from the newly created cards. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at what we have prepared for the existing Rostov cards. Strong. Yes. Uh, so first of all, monster. We've made a few adjustments, some of the cards in there to fit with, uh, well, the new package of monster insectoid we've done. So in the case of either, I, I will let you read it. Yeah, the new ability reads, whenever your opponent plays a unit on their side of the battlefield, damage it by one and gain a charge. Order, spawn a drone on this row, and you start with zero charges. So you're kind of relying on your opponent playing cards on their side of the battlefield. Then you get to spawn drones from it. Yes. Um, so the original either never really landed in terms of how we wanted it to work. To be honest, back then, uh, its adrenaline effect had been kind of forced on it because we were trying to re promote adrenaline. Regardless, this new effect is much simpler, but it provides very decent value on the long run and has the scan dual benefits of, well, obviously being a nice source of drones for you, but also softening enemy units, uh, which mm -hmm. is going to matter, for instance, for your Kikimok Stalker. Next up. I'm going to jump mm -hmm. into the Armored Rajas, <laughs> uh, 5 power now, and its ability is Deploy. If there is another card on this row, Lock Self. Timer 3, if this row is full, boost self by 12. Oh, some, some playing against the clock shenanigans here. Yes. So in the previous patch, we talked about uh, how we had given Armored Rajas previous effect to Plumad, because we mm -hmm. felt like, this was an effect that really, really belonged to Vampire and not really to Insectoid. Yeah. So now it's actually time to give it a different effect. Um, as you said, uh, Armored Archives is kind of a gamble, right? Where you you take the gamble that you're going to be able to fill up your row fast enough so that at the end of the timer, it actually boosts self. Uh, it does need to be dropped on an empty board. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you have to be careful uh, about your timings. Yeah, your row needs to be empty, and you gotta swarm it after that quickly. Mm -hmm. Which gives your opponent a little bit of insight into your game plan, but uh, maybe you can actually play around with that, you know? The bluff. You're not actually planning to fill the row. <laughs> Alright, that's uh, the first two monster highlights, but we've got another slide filled uh, with monster goodness, and it is actually all about the queens, the Kikimor Queen and the Indriga Queen. So. The Kikimor Queen now has an additional line which says, whenever you play an organic card, trigger own thrive. Yeah, so in the case of Kikimor Queen, uh, we always kind of struggle with the card because uh, truth is, its chance to shine as, uh, you know, the big thrive payoff that you might want to go for, honestly had been kind of stolen by Kashi. Um, mm -hmm. and, and Kashi did it in a way that actually made you feel good about the deck. Um, and, and whereas if you were really trying to focus on the Insectoid game plan, Kikimor Queen could be a bit awkward, because truth is you didn't really have a lot of high power units, so triggering the Thrive was difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, we still wanted to keep the Thrive on it, because we felt like this was a bit iconic, but we gave it an extra effect where it can like, if you play an organic card, this will trigger its drive, meaning the card will, is going to get boosted by one, and you're going to trigger the additional effects where all of your insectoids on this row get boosted by one. So that should work much more nicely in the Arrakis Swarm environment. Perfect. Anything else to say here? Well, we have Andrega Queen, right? First of all, uh, you still get to consume an allied unit, and then you gain armor equal to its provision cost. So, uh, explain why we made that change, Sean. Yes. Um, so, the main reason we've changed it is so the card used to gain armor based on the armor of the consumed unit. But 
this only really made sense with him of worker and and as mm -hmm. such was a bit of a weird combination so we felt like uh this effect would make it feel much better with an entire range of stuff you can do with it um and and yeah allow you to more easily gain value from the card fair enough that's it for monsters i hope they are satisfied with those changes and next up we're gonna jump into Skelliger and well peace support <laughs> <laughs> first up the corrupted flaminica a little bit of an adjustment yeah. now actually boosts by two instead of one but there is a well there's another word here which says unique which means that it now counts unique beasts in your graveyard, not total beasts, right? Yeah, very important change. So, um, the reason we made that change, uh, and particularly the unique part, is Corrupted Flaminica used to kind of scream to you that the game plan it wanted you to adopt is that making a lot of copies from your beast and just swarming your graveyard with mm -hmm. these copies. And, th and that wasn't something we were very interested in. Instead, by putting this unique uh, keyword on it, we kind of encourage you to play a, a wide range of beasts, right? Instead of retrying to make a lot of copies. And um, that allows us to bump the payoff from one to two, which is much more exciting. So now the card should prove to be a very scary point slam on the third round. Awesome. We have got another card change for Skelliger and that is the Tursek Bear Master and now only two power um, deploy boost self by the number of unique allied beasts order damage self by own boost then damage that many enemy units by one uh, a little bit of an adjustment here to this bronze tool in the beasts toolkit yeah, so fun fact, this ability originally was an ID for Sea Serpent, mm. but eventually we moved it to Chosuch, uh Beer Master because we felt like it was a better fit. Uh, the main ability, you know, the main effect resides in this deploy, right? Where in, if you get later in the round where you have a very developed board with a lot of different beasts, you, you, you get a very potent point slam. Um, but... Not but, but um, the order gives you a bit of flexibility too. Uh, it is zero points, but uh, you can use this to kind of redistribute the points as damage, which can be used for extra control and, you know, synergies with some of the existing cards. Yeah, Skelliger loves damaging units, that's uh, for sure. And usually damage can be worth more than, than boost as well, in a sense where if, you're, if you've got a lot of boost on one card, it can be eliminated quite quickly. Yeah. Alright, while we're on the topic of bears, let's swap factions to the final highlight, and that is Boris, uh, a beast cut up still. But his ability now reads, at the beginning of your turn, whenever this card, wherever this card is, randomly change own fee to a different cost between 1 and 9. And then the fee is move self to the other row, then boost self by the fee cost. If you have zero coins, also gain one coin for each allied unit on that row, with a cooldown of one. Yeah. So, um, even though it is a pretty big chunk of text, uh, this ability is actually fairly simple. The idea is every turn, uh, the fee changes, right? You get a random value between one and nine. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have exactly the same number of coins and you click that fee, you get rewarded by getting more coins uh, mm -hmm. based on the number of allied units on the on road the board you move to. Um, and the last thing is um, the boost you get on the fee is dependent on the fee value because as the fee is random, we don't want it situations in which you don't want to click it because the payoff isn't good. Uh, and it has a hold on one, which forces you to properly set yourself up in terms of coins if you want to properly pay off from it. Another fun fact, similar as Toshi Beer Master, this originally was an ID for Elvin Gallo. Mm. But eventually we kind of preferred to go for an ID that was more reliable and would 
more directly supports the idea of going down to zero coins, which was this idea of at the end of your turn, you should have zero coins, gain three coins. And so we moved it to Boris. And there you have it. Those are the highlighted changes that we wanted to go through with you. And that actually concludes this part of the video. We have gave a recap on all the upcoming mm -hmm. cards coming tomorrow, April 13th. We revealed the four Nilfgaard cards coming tomorrow as well. All part of the Claw and Dagger card drop, which you can get your hands on tomorrow. We gave a rundown of the upcoming balance changes, which will accompany the card drop tomorrow. And, you know, why don't I just sprinkle in a little bit of a leak as well. There's going to be a special event later on during this month. And perhaps if you've been around for more than a year, you know exactly what month it is and what time it is and whose birthday it might be. Anyways, uh, looking forward to that event coming later this month as well. And that's it from us. Thank you very much for joining Jean. Uh, patch notes should be out for everyone. Thank you all for watching. That's it from me. I'm going to say goodbye and I'll see you very soon. And now I'm going to give the mic to Jean and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye. Uh, finally, a word from my side. Uh, sorry to break the fun, but everything has come to an end. And as it turns out, this will be my last developer video. Uh, starting next month, I'll be moving on to new adventures. It's been quite a journey for me. Uh, I started playing Gwent uh, during the close beta, and I dreamed of uh, joining that team. And I eventually did, during Way of the Witcher. It's, it's subjective and hard to determine, but I sincerely hope that the contribution I brought to Gwent helped make it uh, a more interesting game to play. Of course, Design is a teamwork, and while I won't be there anymore, I'm leaving you in the good hands of my fellow designers. I've merely acted as, a, as the spokesperson for the team, and uh, well, I've been very grateful to be given that opportunity to interact to the community like this. And speaking of which, I would like to thank each one of you, and more particularly your streamers, or content creators, or article writers and anyone who pours themselves into that game and is the beating heart of that community. My greatest pleasure and interest as a designer has been observing how you make the game evolve and you know all of the unique and new ways you use the elements we give you and end up surprising us. This is goodbye but maybe someday in some other place I'll see you again.